It is April 7th, 2023. I'm in Savannah, Georgia, and I'm going to show you how to tell pawpaws from persimmons and hickories because there are three seedlings right here, so this is perfect. So we'll start with the native persimmon. This is Diospyros virginiana. It is native to North America. And as you can, we'll just start at the base and go up. So you see how the leaves are zigzagging up the stem. So there's one over here and then one over here further up. And then it keeps going like that. That leaf formation is called alternating. So you can just remember alternating means it zigzags up the stem. The opposite of alternating is opposite. So they are straight across from each other on the leaf, like on that hickory there. And then if we look at the leaves, these persimmon leaves, they have smooth edges, so there's no serrations like on a knife. Like, think of a sharp cutting knife, they'll have, the edge won't be smooth, it'll have sharp points to help you cut. That's called a serration, like on a saw. So the persimmon leaves have round edges, and they are smaller than my hand. They're kind of a pointed oval shape. And then if we look at the closer part, if we look where they attach to the stem, it's a sort of reddish brown. And then the central leaf vein in the center of the leaf is a light yellow. This is a seedling. You see here, it's been chopped to the ground many times. So it would be bigger than this, but alas. All right, so that is the common persimmon. And they are commonly mistaken for pawpaws. And hickories are also commonly mistaken for pawpaws. This is because hickory leaves get really large, just like pawpaw leaves usually do. But the main way to tell them apart is if you look at these, the edge of these leaves, these are serrated, so think of it like the teeth on a saw. Pawpaw leaves will never be serrated. These ones are. And these are also compound leaves instead of true leaves, and that means that this whole thing above my fingers, this is one leaf. And then these are called leaflets. So it's all attached to the stem on a single leaf stem there. So that's a compound leaf. And the compound leaves on the hickories are right across from each other, and then they will usually have one at the end. And this is also a seedling that has been mowed down many times. So these probably will not get any bigger than this because they'll just keep getting mowed down. And here we have the pawpaw. This is a small flower pawpaw, a Simina parviflora, Hickories are in the genus Caria. I don't know enough to tell which one that is just as a little baby like that, so that one's just Caria. But this is a Simina parviflora, the small flower pawpaw, sometimes called the dwarf pawpaw. And like the common persimmon, they have smooth leaves and the leaves alternate. It's really uncomfortable crouching on the forest floor like this. But you can tell pawpaws from persimmons by, as the most key feature, if you look at the very end of the stem, there's a little fuzzy node there that sticks out like a paintbrush. And then the persimmon, uh, well this one's still too young to tell. But with persimmons at the base of each leaf, yep you can kind of see it there, they'll have little pointy buds further down. Come on camera. Little pointy buds at the base of each leaf so they won't be pointy on pawpaws. If a pawpaw is going to flower next year it will have round buds at the base of each leaf but this one will not be so there's just tiny little buds. You can also tell, I don't know, I have to stand up because it's killing my legs. You can also tell from the shape of the leaves if we Pull that one over. See the persimmon is more evenly oval shaped and then the pawpaw it's narrower at the base and it gets wider 
towards the top before narrowing again. And if you are up north further than Savannah, Georgia, which is pretty much everywhere except Florida, uh, you will be looking at common pawpaws probably, and their leaves will get a lot bigger than this. I think the biggest small flower pawpaw leaf I found was as big as my hand. It's still spring, so these aren't that big yet. Common pawpaw leaves will almost always be bigger than your hand, especially later in the year, which is one way to tell them from small flower pawpaws. And you can also tell them from small flower pawpaws because small flower pawpaws have a smoother leaf texture. Common pawpaws usually It'll puff up a lot more dramatically than this between each vein on the leaf. Although they tend to be smoother when they're grown in full sun, if you're a gardener, because most gardeners are growing them in full sun. And then, so yeah, here's another small flower pawpaw next to a hickory. There's a bunch of small flower pawpaw stems here. They also spread through, uh, I don't know if they're called rhizomes for these. They spread through under underground runners, like common pawpaws, and I'm not entirely sure how far one plant can spread, but there's a lot of them here. Oh, and I can also, like I said, it's April, so if you're going to be walking around in the woods, bring a stick to poke for snakes with. Here's another persimmon, I mean pawpaw. And then here, just because it has large leaves and I think they're cool, this is a witch hazel. I don't actually know what witch hazel is used for. But that is also native and also pretty cool. If I didn't mention it, I'm at the... Ah, I can never remember how you say this name properly. It's the Georgia Southern University's Armstrong Campus. And they have a little walking path with a quote unquote disc golf course aka frisbee golf so one of those paths starts right here right down there is the recreational fields but if you come here and you want to see the pawpaws they have street lamps and they're each numbered so if you go to number nine walk this way so the pawpaws are right here so in between that entrance to the frisbee golf and that one, I don't know if you can see it there. There's a little concrete slab over there. So yeah, you can come see the pawpaws for yourself, learn how to identify them. Uh, since they keep cutting these ones down, you might be able to try and dig one up to clone it. Since these will never be allowed to fruit, I would try finding the smallest one you can and bring a big shovel because if you just bring a little trowel, it's not gonna work very well. All right, that's it for this video. Bye-bye.